the president's interviews. Even in the bid to minimize the damage on the proverbial Arab street, the president created a new mini-controversy today. He granted interviews to the al Arabiya network and to the U.S. government-funded al Hara network, but not to Al Jazeera television. An administration source telling NBC News the U.S. is still, quote, sore at Al Jazeera, and while it may eventually grant interviews to the most widely watched of the Arabic-language news broadcasters, that would not start now and not with the president. In the two interviews he did do, Mr. Bush said that the people of Iraq must understand that what took place in that prison does not represent the America that I know. He also promised that justice will be served, and he called the abuses abhorrent. But even as his own commander in the field, General Kimmett, apologized in so many words, Mr. Bush did not. It's very important for people, uh, your listeners, to understand in our country that uh, when a issue is brought to our attention uh, on, on this magnitude, we act. And we act in a way where leaders are willing to discuss it with the media. And we act in a way where, uh, you know, our, our Congress uh, asks pointed questions to the leadership. In other words, people want to know the truth. That stands in contrast to dictatorships. A dictator wouldn't be answering questions about this. And those interviews will be greeted how? We're joined now by Raghi Dargam, the senior diplomatic correspondent for the London-based Arabic daily Al Hayat. Good evening. Good evening to you, Keith. In a lot of quarters here, there seems to be a sense of futility to this, that the U.S. could not possibly be more disliked than it already is, than it already was. Is that true? Are gestures like the president's useless at this point? It's as bad as uh, you could imagine. Now we are seen as the primitive America, the brutal America. Uh, and we, they're saying we've known this all along about you. And now only when uh, the administration was forced to admit that there were such atrocities, it finally tried to do the quick fix. And the trouble is that there is something that smacks of a cover-up. And I think an interview or two... Uh, that's not going to correct the problems we have uh, with the Arab world. Senator Durbin just suggested that those prison photographs are the recruiting posters for terrorists. Indeed. Has the U.S. now put itself in the position where all that's being determined now is not whether or not whether if we have inspired new terrorists but actually how many new terrorists we've just inspired? We have no idea how many. The problem is that uh, the violations of humanitarian law ha are way beyond what has happened, atrocities that has taken place, that have taken place at the Abu Ghraib prison. What uh, the American forces are doing is something that is you, you, viewed, at least in the Arab world, as a similar occupation to that of Israel. That is to say, demolition of homes, arbitrary arrests, um, sort of like raids on, 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 on uh, homes and pulling people out and just putting them in prison without trial. All of these things are really leaving angry people who want to revenge. It's a cycle of revenge, keys. And I think unless there is a true correction of policies, I think the worst is yet to come. I know this goes against your idea here of long-term solutions instead of quick fixes and the dangers of quick, fix cause quick fixes and relying on them. But is there anything short term as uh, perhaps not as a quick fix but instead as the leading edge of a long-term solution that can be done in or by this country now to at least blunt the effect of the prison abuse. I'm of the view, and I actually have changed my mind, I used to think that the best thing would be for the American forces to stay in Iraq for a while because I was afraid of civil war and an eruption of, of disaster and uh, chaos in the country. Now, with them several and fundamental mistakes that were made by the decision makers in this administration, I, f I feel that it's better for Iraq and better for the United States to take advantage of the 30th of June date, the date when we're supposed to turn over sovereignty to the Iraqis, to say, mission accomplished, let's get out. I'm afraid that uh, it's too late to resurrect uh, the, the, the liberation of Iraq. We are already seen as an ugly occupier. Mm. Raki Dargam, senior diplomatic correspondent for Al Hayat, the London-based Arabic Daily. Many thanks. Sober words. Thanks to you. Thanks.